Alright, I just spent the last couple of hours playing the open beta for the biggest, most expansive $70 quadruple-A game of all time from Ubisoft, Skull and Bones. And holy fucking shit, is it the most boring game they've ever released. So, I want to reiterate, my experience with Skull and Bones is based off a few hours in the open beta for the game that's releasing fully next week for $79.99. You can tell this game was in development hell for quite a few years because everything in the tutorial and subsequently thereafter was all pretty much half-baked. We have a character customization system that is some of the shallowest I've seen from any game, let alone a Ubisoft title, and what I find strange is you can customize your pirate, but the only time you will ever see them is when you're on hub islands or towns with no actual gameplay. You can run around and speak to the blacksmith and ship crafter and the customization store, but you will never, ever get off your ship at any other time. Outside of this point here in the tutorial where you have to like break into the shipwreck and then walk around, pick up some lore items, and then leave. You can play around with the cannons, but there's nothing to do. Like, this is so bad. And I'm guessing they're gonna have these little moments in the later game where you can jump off your ship and be a pirate, but in reality, it's so dumbed down. There's no sword fighting. There's no like melee combat. There's nothing that even resembles what this game was originally supposed to be. Like honestly, watch this cutscene. It fades in, my character walks up to this dead pirate. I grab something off the table. Oh, look at me. And then what? Oh, there's a letter. I'm gonna grab it. All right. My guy looks like a fucking dirty juggalo. All right. We got ourselves a mark. Cool. All right. Voiceless protagonist. And then I walk out. Cool, now I can run back to my ship. <laughs> like that is, that's all it is. Imagine my surprise when you go to click board ship during combat and you're met with the lamest fucking cutscene that lasts about five seconds and then a black screen telling you what you've looted from the ship. The boarding section is simply a way to end combat a little earlier by dwindling down your enemy ship and then hitting R. Holy fuck. If you wanna loot and gather resources on your travels, you don't jump off onto the islands like in Sea of Thieves, you just pull up next to trees on the shore and a little mini game prompts up that you have to click when the item hits the green box. The only way this is quadruple A is if it's followed by multiple S's. The voice acting and the lip sync for the NPCs and cinematics are fucking god awful. Outside of this guy here, I actually thought this was a pretty decent cutscene and character. This is editing Big Fry, there's no way I'm moving past this point without showing you some raw dialogue from the opening of the game. <laughs> We survived the battle, and now you arrived to help crew the Dao. I would say our fortune's on the rise, no? There's a certain yearning in your eyes. I've seen the same glint in others before. I'm sure you will steer us true to St. Anne. To reach Parad Paradise, we must first know the way. Here, a logbook we retrieved from the wreck. More than ink and parchment, our fates are revealed in layers and often from plain sight. Perhaps this will help you chart your path forward, friend. I mean, the audio isn't even mixed properly. You can just hear the water more than anything else in the cutscene. And they both sound like fucking robots with their voices not even synced up to their lips. But in the first couple of hours, you're met with a ton of pretty lame fetch quests, terribly written story and dialogue, an open world live service game where I see other players pirate ships, but I can't do anything with them. You can't go on somebody else's ship. It's like, a, it's like a pirate game without actually being a pirate. And the game feels like it's been reworked multiple times, but hasn't quite struck the landing. There's just a lot of disconnects with the intro to the game. You start with this ship and they kind of show you what the game is going to be like when you have a bunch of ships shooting at you. That's your intro to the game. And then you get shipwrecked. You're talking to a couple NPCs and then you start the game in this little like shanty boat. But then they have this awkward mechanic where if you have like sharks kind of swimming next to you, you can go into a first person mode and throw spears at them. 
hold right click, aim the spear, shoot it, and then come back to running your ship. It feels like at one point they had some of the mechanics fleshed out for when you are playing as a pirate, but they just didn't flesh it out far enough to make it a, a core feature of the game, I guess. But when you combine that with the fact that like you can customize the character, but you can't really use them anywhere that's like notable gameplay wise. And then you have these weird shifting perspectives in, in the first 30 minutes of the game. Everything just feels disconnected. But here's what I think is about to happen. I think that people have been expecting Skull and Bones to be a complete disaster, both design-wise and technically as a piece of software. And actually, I thought the game ran very well. I do think that there's some shots when you're out at sea and the weather's going crazy. It does look pretty visually pleasing, and the actual foundation here is something that I didn't expect to be as well put together as it is. So I think because expectations are way below sea level, the fact that there is a game here is going to be enough for some people to buy in. I don't see them making their investment back, but don't be surprised if you see quite a few people going, damn, I actually think Skull and Bones was better than I expected. When your expectations are lower than the Titanic floor, there's really nowhere to go but up. For me, this now comes down to how well they support the game post-launch. I know there is a market for a game with deeper mechanics than Sea of Thieves, but I'm not quite sure if Skull and Bones is going to fill that void. But when I see the credits for the game showing off 11 studios from Ubisoft who worked on the title, and this is the early game experience in a beta that is really just used for marketing, I have no faith. Maybe if I put more time in at launch, I could get further and see the depth and maybe the game gets better, but that would require me spending $79 on a Ubisoft title. And since Ubisoft wants me to be comfortable not owning their games, I guess they can go fuck themselves. For me, there were moments where I felt this could be a decent experience, but when you take into account all of the corners you can see, they clearly cut to make sure this game goes out after several delays. I don't think I can sail the seas with this one. And who knows? I wasn't a fan of Sea of Thieves at launch, but came back to the game several years later, and it's been one of the best co-op, like, casual experiences that my friend group has played in the last couple of years. Skull and Bones might be the same for me, but for right now, it's no dice. My name is Big Fry. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you guys think down below. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next one.